part 4 of Entity Framework tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss customizing table, column and form key column names when using Entity Framework Code First approach. This is continuation to part 3, so please watch part 3 before proceeding. We will be modifying the example that we worked with in the previous session. If you recollect from part 3 of this video series, this table employees is auto-generated by the Entity Framework based on this employee class. Look at this foreign key column name department ID. It has got an underscore. Now let's say we want this foreign key column name to be generated as department ID without an underscore in its name. So how to control the foreign key column name? That is with the help of this employee class. So we want the foreign key column name to be department ID without an underscore. So I would create a public property with that name. Look at this department ID. Um, it has no underscore within its name. And then we decorate the navigation property that is the department navigation property with foreign key attribute passing in this department ID property as a string parameter. Let's look at that in action. Keep in mind this foreign key attribute is present in system.componentModel.dataAnnotations.schema namespace. So let's flip to Visual Studio and let's first create that public property. So public integer and let's call it department ID because that's how we want the foreign key column to be named without an underscore. And then we decorate this department navigation property with foreign key attribute. This foreign key attribute is present in this namespace. So I have already um, you know, included that using declaration there. And then to the constructor of this attribute, we are going to pass the name of this property as an argument. Okay, so let's build our solution. And then let's view this web form in the browser. Now, keep in mind we already have the sample database and if you look at this employees table notice this department ID column it has got an underscore within that. Now you know after this um, database is created we have changed the model based on which the database is created and look at what happened because of that the model backing the um, employee DB context has changed since the database was created. Okay, so the model has changed. That's why by default entry framework is going to throw this runtime error. We will discuss fixing this error the right way in a later video session. For now, to get around the problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this database from SQL Server Management Studio. So we no longer have the sample database. So let's now go to Visual Studio and then view this web form in the browser window. So now it is going to create the database once again and then create employees and department uh, tables. So let's refresh this. So we have the sample database there and then we have both the tables and uh, departments and employees. And if you look at employees table, look at the department ID column. It doesn't have an underscore in its name. Now if we select the data from these tables, they will be empty. Why? Because the database is created from the scratch. So obviously we need to execute this uh, insert script to have the data populated. All right, so to change the foreign key column name, we use the foreign key attribute. Similarly, if you want to change the table name, so here the name of the class is employee. So by default, Entity Framework is going to generate the table as employees. But for some reason, let's say I want that table name to be TBL employees, then what would we do? we would decorate this class with table attribute. And then we can specify the name that we want uh, you know, uh, to use for the database table name. So we want that to be TBL employees. Similarly, if you want, for example, first name uh, to be generated as first underscore name, then we would use the column attribute. So here we want to change the column name so column and then we specify uh, the name that we want. So we want it as first underscore name. Okay, so let's um, build the solution. And before we view the web form in the browser window, let's drop this database. Otherwise, we are going to get the same error. So let's delete the database. 
So we no longer have the sample database. Now let's view the web form in the browser window. So it's going to display a blank web form. It is still processing, meaning it's trying to create the database and the respective tables for us. Okay, and let's go ahead and refresh databases. And if we look at the employees table, first of all, look at that. It's called TBL employees. The name is now changed uh, to whatever we have specified. And if you look at columns, look at first name column. It's called first underscore name. Let's insert the sample data. And obviously, if we execute the script as it is, we are going to get an error because employees is now called as TBL employees. So let's actually replace all this uh, instances of employees to TBL employees. So replace all. And let's execute this insert script. OK, and let's go ahead and refresh this page. We should get the data um, that we expect. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.